Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And this is number five of the Ginger Expedition. Let's just go for it. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. I wondered what that was for a second. It's just this cardboard box. Right there, if you just stop it there, it's like, what the hell is that? Just got back from shipping out the ignition module and the dash to SOS Diagnostics. Chad over there is going to do his thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, 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 no. The guy who works at this place, the guy who's going to sort out all of your problems is actually called Chad. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> thing, program the stuff, give me two new keys, and I'll see you guys when I get it back. But in the meantime, we do have a few packages coming in, so we'll cut to those now. Do you wink at me? I'm trying to I'm trying to flirt with me. Stop it. Oh, dude, click. But it, I, it's not gonna. But please clean this out. He won't. He won't. I can't believe he hasn't taken the tank off to check what's what it's like underneath at least the minimum. Nope. Not that we've seen, and to be quite honest, he hasn't undone any of the butts and eyes. See all the stuff, there's the emblem again. Alright, you guys just saw I got that beautiful left side bottom underbelly fairing for the Ducati. I just put that aside as I'm gonna wait to put that on until I have more done on the bike. But for now, we're gonna jump on the front wiring harness on this Ducati, get all Well yeah, the, the, the fairings are the last things you put on. You don't put you don't put the you don't put the valve guides in and then put the fairings on. All of the wires are paired that we can and look for the connectors that we I've just popped in the crank bearings, and then as you can see, we're just sticking the outside fairing on now. We're going to have it hang off, off the case, and we haven't even put the cases together yet. But it's all right, these two flapping bits of plastic, that's where they live. <laughs> we need that are missing from the wiring harness. So let's jump on that. Oh God, is this going to be good? Oh, he's got a proper crimper. Ooh, maybe, 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 maybe that explains a lot of things. Maybe the ginge is an electrician, electrician, and maybe he um, is going to wow us. Let's see. I'm not old enough. A heat gun, not a hairdryer, not a lighter. Oh, maybe. What is he heating though? Oh. So he's got the heat shrinky things, but looks like not really good quality ones. And then it just to these, he just saw black CA glue or maybe something weird. So basically, I'm just tracing. Oh, 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 they're sticking to each other. You can see right here as he pulls away, they pull apart. Come on. Oh, it doesn't like going, it doesn't like going slow. 
slow motion fault that you see it's like pulling apart. So basically, <laughs> I'm yet. just tracing through this whole wiring harness, looking for any little cuts in the electrical tape along the wiring harness. There was a pretty small cut in the wiring harness right here, which ended up being two cut completely wires and a little cut on a smaller wire, plus a little cut on this tube right here, which I'm not sure what it is. I love a diode. Anyway, I'm just going to keep tracing this whole wiring harness until I find little cracks like this that are showing some wires and I'm going to open them up, inspect them and repair if needed. And we're going to keep going through the rest of this wiring harness. He's one of the first people I've ever heard say the word inspect. I'll give him that. I see some Tessa fabric tape there. Very nice. It'll give him that. Obviously, Dad's got some money. This stuff. This is Tessa tape, the company Tessa. And this is the fabric tape, which is basically the stuff that wrapped this stuff in. It's so much better than that horrible insulation tape. Ah! Ah! Got a spare one. Oh, yeah, he's got the torch out though. Although, this might be just out of the box though. The soldering iron and the torch. That might be just out of the box. I'd love to know what the black stuff is. It says, it says there, liquid what? Some liquid electrical tape. That doesn't sound good. It literally says liquid electrical tape. Oh, oh you guys, you, you electricians, you can tell me. Is that a thing? Say these he does all these fast cut, fast cut, fast cut, fast cut, doesn't show you, doesn't show you the real damage, doesn't show you close ups, doesn't show you all of it. This to jump to jump to jump, this bit is dragging on. Maybe he likes all this, and there is no real reason putting these on because all these blocks usually don't fit one, doesn't fit the other, usually speaking. But the cat are known to not be good at electronics. All right, so we got all the wires that I could repair repaired, but there are two connections still left on the wiring harness that the connectors and the actual leads completely ripped off the whole harness. Now I'm gonna need to do my research. Well, that doesn't like it's been ripped off. That's twisted. Search, figure out what goes here and maybe even buy an old wiring harness because there are a few on eBay right now. Indicators? That are I'm just looking, he's got main beam, he's got this, that, and the other, but there's a long, thin, stupid with the, the grey, the, they're either black, they're either black, brown, or grey. Some of them are white, the, the little slim connectors for the indicators. And I can't remember seeing any indicators on this. Like a hundred bucks for a whole front wiring harness that's been damaged. And hopefully those have the connectors if I can't find the connectors online. Because these, what that right, so yeah, they probably are indicators because been damaged. that one there, that's the horn. So this one is for the horn. And hopefully. So that's where that where this loom is, the horn there, then there's some that go up to the top. So the ones that go up to the top are all these lights, these dashes, lights. They'll be indicators. Two wires. Yeah. Those have the connectors if I can't find the connectors online. So as of now, the wiring harness is good to go. It's there, look, it breaks there. And them that purple one is his horn. 
So all these are fat connectors, so they'll be your indicators. Oh, I'm gonna move on. To I'm guessing, I'm guessing. Maybe the... The next thing. What's this? No, what was that actually? I might be the wrong. connectors online. So as of now, the wiring harness... Oh, that's, a, well, I, that's for something This is good to go. I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Try and reuse the same tire because he had the tire. <laughs> that, would, <laughs> that would be quite cool if that tire was actually because it's a tire. If that tire was actually okay, it didn't have any nips in it or anything, and the actual tire was okay, it'd be cool to actually put it back on because he's using the rear. actually using the same tire as he using a rock what 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 You are taking this off and you spend God knows how much on this because of that skid mark. It's a big skid mark, but the the whole bike's covered in skid marks. I look at this mudguard. That stick has been pulled off. There's scratches on that. Someone's touched this up. So this, this is his replacement because the other one was smashed to buggery. So even this has got loads of skid marks on it. So... You know what I mean? It's like these all these all these fairings are easy to take off because some bikes have these huge gigantic things. This is actually split into loads of different fairings. So why don't you just send the ones that are absolutely trashed, like the skid mat one? You could probably use the money from buying a new side one to pay for the paint or go to, mainly towards the paint instead of buying all this new shit or second hand scratch stuff. <laughs> It's almost like it's, it's like this. I'm trying to do the minimum to get it back on the road and to be a complete bike. Okay, cool. So that rear, that rear tail section, you'd be like, I'd leave that. Oh, I'm trying to make it a show bike. Well, then the whole lot needs redoing then. Which then means that you can rub that down and have it sorted out. Seems bizarre to me. It bought an entire loom. Wow. An entire loom. Holy shit. So are you got if it is the just say it's the indicators. If you find the indicator leads and it is them, please don't cut them off this loom. Please go and find some. Buy buy some. And then do the repair because you have to you have to splice them on anyway. Please don't cut because now you what you've got is you've got one knackered loom, one good one. You're now going to butcher one good one to put two connectors on a bad one to make it work, and now you've destroyed a perfectly good loom. No, not for just two connectors, and not if they're like not specialist connectors. They're indicator connectors. You can get them bloody everywhere. You could even get a pair of. It depends which the male or female. Because usually they cross them. So usually you have a, a male and a female and a male and a female. So if you just go and buy two indicators, which I don't think this thing has, so you'd have to buy them anyway, but you go and buy two indicators with the... I'm sure you could just buy them, the connectors. There's three wires there. I just noticed there's three wires. Yeah, there's three. Indicators and... It's in the right spot. Like I said, that's the that orange one. The, the purple one's the horn. Orange. Oh, there we are. Three wires. They are indicator ones. 
There is. They're the indicator jobbies. You can buy them. Um, it says left. I can see it says the word left. That probably says right. What's the other one? So guys, the wiring harness on eBay that I was talking about before came in. I did my research, checked out a diagram, and these three... So you checked out the diagram? Oh my God, so you didn't even have to buy one. ...cables were the cables I needed for the turn signals and this other cable. I'm not sure what it is. It might be an ambient air temp sensor, but... No, that's usually in the air box. Tilt switch? I don't know, actually, what is that? Signals and this other cable, I'm not sure what it is. It could be. It might be an ambient air temp sensor, but before that, I only thought there were... You've looked at the manual, you should know. There are two cables here, because originally I only was looking at the top here, which only showed two cables missing, but at the bottom here, there are three separate wires. So I'm really glad that I ended up just getting the whole harness, because I ended up getting all the cables I needed. Now I'm going to cut these off and splice them in to the old wiring harness. So this one... See, oh no, I, I buy that sensor and then wire it in. Wiring harness is actually for a different model bike that has different features than mine. But thankfully, these wires are universal because the colors of the wires are the same as the colors on my old harness. Yeah, so don't cut the... Oh, God. Because you could sell that back. You could just get rid of that. You say, sorry, dude, I got the wrong one and send it back to him. Because now you know what they are. You know what to look for. You know the length. You know everything you need to know. Get your money back. Ah, but if it's dad's money, you don't care, do you? I'll say you don't care, and then you get the, the Fujiwara heat gun. Heavy duty, high performance. I bet it is. What's it? <laughs> Let's have a look how much it is. I bet you... I bet you it's a it's a uh, an Amazon special. Is it an Amazon special? It's an Amazon special. Oh my god! It's a fifteen hundred watt one with five nozzles. How much does it cost? Oh, it's un all available. God damn it! God damn it! Oh, I wanted the heat gun he had. I really wanted the heat gun he had. Got oh look, there's one. The si oh my god, really? So it's six six dollars ninety-five. Box open but brand new. Six seven dollars. Oh, it comes in an awesome bag that has that Chinese that, that lovely Chinese smell, I bet you. Thirty-six dollars brand new from AliExpress. Oh no, sorry, he didn't say that. It said Twenty-one pounds. Uh, it says that that this one is the most budget-friendly on our list. Why, with all your crap? So that's the better mini gun. That's a mini one. Why do you want a small one? <gasps> You do a DeWalt cordless one. Looks like a... I'd constantly pick that up thinking it's a drill. That's the only problem with that. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a it's a it's a flamethrower heat gun. Oh no, these these things are lethal. These things are absolutely soldered. Yeah, these are dangerous. They yeah, they're dangerous. Them things. Gee, they get really bloody hot, and they they just you get nozzles, so they just blow out hot air. It's like oh my god, they're lethal. So the porter cable, that'll probably actually be a really nice one. Um, and then the Milwaukee one. Here it is. This is the best one. It was nine. There we go. It was nineteen ninety nine on Amazon. It said, but it's gone. Is spare no expense. <laughs> It says high performance. It's clearly high performance. It's a heat gun. I'm just messing around. I'm just messing around. Calm down. Calm down, commenter who's losing his shite. So you can put proper... 
proper heat shrink on them. If the wires are disconnected, you can get it all on. Ah! So annoying. It's Christmas Eve here, guys, and man, is it foggy tonight. We were supposed to have gotten a bunch of snow, but instead it's 40 degrees and wonderful outside. I finished all the wiring for the front harness. It's this is everything, everything that happens. Everything that happens is just God did it. Everything that happens, God did it. It's just, it's wonderful outside. People are dying. AIDS is killing babies. It's all wonderful. Thank, thank the Lord. <laughs> all good to go. I just taped it up to make sure nothing was getting rubbed against when I'm working on the front of this bike. Now I want to show you guys the parts that I just got in the mail. So to start off, I got some plastics for the very front of the bike, as well as a front wheel cover and a new... A front wheel cover. There we go. Tail piece. Just like a swinging arm. Piece cover as the one on the bike is pretty heavily scratched and I don't think I'm gonna be able to repair that. No. I cannot believe they, I can't believe the spray them. Next is a mint headlight that I picked up on eBay for a great deal, as well as a triple tree because my triple tree is actually cracking a little bit on the aluminum here. And you can see the gap on this one is greater than the gap on the other one because it got hit so hard in the front that it basically He's got the wrong one. Actually bent the metal out as well as the bolt for this triple tree is actually stuck in there. And I don't want to end up having to drill it out and then mess up the threads and then need a new triple tree anyway. So I just... He's got the wrong one. Decided to get a new triple tree in the first place. I also got some... No, 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 no. You got the wrong one. I'm, I'm trying to work out if it's the camera, but it's not the camera. Picked up on eBay for a great Let's go back to the beginning deal, of it. as well as a triple tree. They're different sizes. That is a lot smaller than that. Look at the size difference. Now, this might have been stretched out, but that gap there is wider than that one. This is closer to the camera, but it's not that much closer to the camera. These are two different parts. I'm just trying to look at everything. These are two different parts. That is small, much smaller. My head's in the way. I might move the camera over to this side, but that is a lot, lot bigger than that. Wow. Like a lot, lot bigger. Like these are nearly in line with each other. So this one is nearly as far away from the camera as that is. That's a, that's a lot bigger. This is what happens. It's like, um, the R6, the R6 triple trees, the trees, the, the, they're different sizes. Uh, and this is just something you've got to be aware of. So the USD forks, the R6 for Project Isaac, the R6 has conventional forks and USDs. And one goes from this to bloody this. It's like 33 to 44, I believe. But they're two different sizes. Yes, this might have stretched out slightly, but no, no, no. I think that gap is that gap, which is a lot wider than that one and that one. Because my triple tree is actually cracking a little bit on the aluminum here. And you can see the gap on this one is greater than the gap on the other one because it got hit so hard. In the so his, his new one is too small. The front that it basically bent the metal out as well as the bolt. You can see it. For this triple tree is actually stuck in there. And I don't want to end up having to drill it out and then mess up the threads and then need a new triple tree anyway. So I just decided to get a new triple tree in the first place. I also got some coolant for the bike as well as a OEM oil filter. And the oil is coming in here real soon. And lastly, the one... Oh, these are the, the really weird oil filters that Ducati have. Like, really, they have to be awkward, though. Wiring harness, which you guys already know about, and I don't need any more connectors from this wiring harness, but I'm gonna save it because hey, if anyone else needs some Ducati wire connectors, let me know. I'll find the connector for you and I'll ship it out to you. That's nice. I've got to give him that. I, he's, I know he's trying to forcibly make friends because he hasn't got no soul, but um, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. So that is actually a really nice thing because you're like, dude, I've got this connected, burnt out, it's sat on fire, it did whatever, it, it snapped, whatever. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll cut this off and I'll five, there you go. I'll just send you it. That's actually quite nice. I must save it. Well done, Ginge.
This is a great thing to have if anyone needs an extra connector. Now, let's head on with the bike. I, I it doesn't it doesn't come across as been disingenuous there. Oh. Oh, that's tasty. Oh, the carnage. See, how knackered is this? Oh, it's pretty bad, isn't it? Well, say that, look at that, right? The other one. That has the other bit broken in it, but this panel is okay. I didn't see the tip. Yeah, this, this the mudguard, the, the front wheel cover's knackered. <laughs> Yeah, you see, look, the size of these forks, they're different all over the place. You know, they go fat, they're the weird ones, fat, small, fat, small, fat, small. So if he's going to get replacements for them, and they're the same replacements, then his York isn't going to fit. God, that wheel, look. Sayonara. Yeah, there's not this is that a, that's a big giant crack down that one, but is this pretty much alright? He's got some skid marks on it, but I mean... We've all got skid marks. <laughs> to do that not just that cave in the wheel so every smoke every spoke that goes pong, 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 it's just oh it's energy it's just energy you've got to distribute that energy the energy is x amount so it's like having a hundred pounds you got a hundred pounds and every time you break something you're gonna shell out a tenner so there's a tenner there's a tenner there's a tenner there's a tenner and then you've run out right and it's just like the sheer amount of force to break this snap snap every every square centimeter of cross section that it breaks that's it all adds up so snap 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 and then it, it went like this eh, to your steering stem in its bearings so it went eh, to the bearings and then it just went snap 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 the wheel just went slow. discs see you later all of that stuff all that jazz then it had the power to go have that cylinder head and the frame's fine. That front section frame that is attached to the front of the engine, it's fine. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. A actually, actually, that also tells us something else, doesn't it? It does tell us something else. You'll notice that there's one big... Oh, I also bent the fork. So you'll notice right there, I will give you a second. What is there that is a bit bizarre? It uh, Bizarre isn't probably the right word. It gives you a clue about something. Both of the steering stops, so the end stops, you steer it, you know, going from lock to lock, right, are intact. Intact, they don't even look down. This happened, but they're fine. Now, you can break these off if you just got... You know, like someone's trying to break your steering lock. And you can break these off. So when this happened, the wheel didn't go like that. You know, the, your, your, your steering didn't go jarring like that. Which generally means... Because if it, it hit it and went whack, it would generally snap one of them. So it didn't manage to snap one of these, which means that the bike was probably lent over. 
So what I mean is, you think about a wheel as like a disc, right? Oh, I've got a disc. I've got a metal disc. So you think of a wheel as a metal disc, right? Like this, and it's got a contact point, right? If the wheel is flat like this, it's actually harder to turn. If it's on its pivot point and can turn around its axis, that's easier. But if it's like this, it's kind of like it digs into the floor. Where if it's on its pivot point, it's easier just to pivot because the the front. Let me put it that way. The front and back edge, when they're like that, are making it more stable. Where if you have it like this, it's actually easier just to rotate because the steering axis goes through the, the contact point, the trail point there. But if you turn it over like that, it's more, it's hard. So the steering was probably, the the the, the wheel was probably led over a bit. Probably. It's just a, a, a scenario, if you want to think about that. I'm just surprised that none of them are broken off. Like, look at all the varying diameters that these things have. Jesus Christ. The other thing as well is about this frame that attaches to the front of the engine. It doesn't have to be cracked. You can stretch the bolts. You can deform it before it fractured. And that's done, right? It means it's weak as anything now, which means it doesn't need much of a twat just to break it. So I went through all the parts that I had previously from the bike and got all the salvageable parts. And oh, that's, that steering stem is something else. I've never seen anything like that. Bolts. Oops, go back. That's I had amazing. previously from the bike and got all the salvageable parts. Like, it is basically S-necked. It, it, it goes, it, it's two parallel lines with the steering stem in the middle of it. So it's up, across, and then up. And it's just like, within the, <laughs> within the bearings. Wow, that is amazing. That is, you, that, that's amazing. <laughs> Jesus. Like what you'd expect is if you had a if you had two bearings there and there and then you had the shaft stick out, you'd expect it to do that and maybe buckle in the middle, but it it's moved the bet, which means that, that big collar that's probably squashed. Which means it's probably out it's probably egg shaped. I wonder how good his steering is. Because you put new bearings in it, but yeah, yeah, it's his alignment. Is the is the, the the so you take the front wheel and the back wheel and you take the plane that the front and back wheel sit in so there's the planes you know just say there's a a, a wheel that rotates a, perpendicular to this plane and then one here so basically a plane a vertical plane right you you get it I'm been retarded here and then you've got that like that whoop, whoop, like that right that's the vertical plane that we're talking about the way the bike travels is the steering s turning pivoting uh, through that plane intersecting that plane it's basically the rotational axis of the trail or is it it wonky <sighs> we're not going to find out <laughs> and it's... bolts all in these tubes right here as well as i went over the damaged shocks that i had as the left one on the front of the bike is complete what's that say Platinum plus filler. Completely demolished. There's dents in it. It's leaking and it's pretty badly bent. As well as the right one, which is this one right here. As you can see, maybe you can tell on camera, but it is bent a yeah, yeah, it's bent. little bit at the very top. And when you spin it, it has a, a lot of res. You can see it's it's bent. And it goes off over there. Wow. Wow. Resistance as this new one that I just got has zero resistance at all. So I can tell this one is bent. So I actually just put an order in on a new one. And I also got all the bolts and tabs off of all these bad fairings that are completely cracked. See, that one's cracked. Yeah, I get that one. But I don't think the other one was. And demolished so I can transfer all that over to the new fairings. This is my bad parts pile. Everything that I cannot use that's bent, damaged, and has no bolts left on it. Now I'm going to slap in the left tail fairing on you know cut bits off of them making key rings and some to your fans on this bike as i'd buy a bit of it <laughs> mine is pretty badly scratched beyond repair and that's not beyond rep now you're now you, you you're starting to delve now that's not beyond repair at all i'm gonna take off the right side as i'm gonna get keys in pretty soon to see if it works with my original lock so i can put that original lock 
back on the back side of this bike. Uh, this whole tunnel idea is um, just, it's a good way of removing um, form drag just completely because you now turn that which would be just solid and you now turned it into a thing that uh, can just pass through. So that's cutting form drag an awful lot. But if you did that and take all the fairings off and just learn to sit on this bit, right, just make a little diamond shaped pad, it'd be even better. <laughs> a bit of a waste of money, wasn't it? And these are just gagging to break off, aren't they? Jesus. I always wish with... Oh, God, this cat... This, this, this is a bit shite, isn't it? It's just like, that's super crisp, and then this is... Obviously, Alan did this side, and Daniel did this side. And Daniel is the is is the, is the guy who puts the BS in the, in this. Um, wow, that's really rough. It just looks really rough. Um, oh, what was I going to say? I can't remember now. Oh yes, I wish that I wish that at some point I wish they'd put steel steel impregnated sections into fairings so in other words you'd have like a flat steel plate with two lugs on it and a long flat panel two lugs on it the two lugs are where you bolt it down and then the the, the plastic is molded over the top of that so it's basically like your two mounting points and a big surface area of one mil sheet steel just for it to grab onto so then you know you've got this large spread distribution so you don't break the tabs off and I don't mean break the tabs off in a crash. That's always going to happen. I mean, so you don't crack. Just by tightening a bit too hard, you don't crack it off or something. Right? It gets a bit of a shock and it doesn't just crack the tab off. But maybe it's maybe it's a crash thing, like when you crash it and it cracks and you've got this big bit of steel sticking out. It's like, maybe it's that. Who knows? Or maybe it's just the cost. Or maybe it's the fact that it's steel and you'd have to use stainless or something. Who knows? Shut up, Matt. Shut up. Recently, I've been reading up about these Marzocchi shocks and how they lose rebound after a while of use and how people usually upgrade them or replace them with something else, something better that doesn't lose the rebound after you go through a few sets of these. Well, maybe that's just that when they're stock, they've got shit oil in them. They lose the rebound. So I'm hoping these shocks don't give out on me as I've already put... I imagine there's a lot of people who own these Ducatis that do a lot of talking shite. Because I, I've got one of the really fast bikes, so therefore all of a sudden now I'm, now I'm an expert. And they start waffling, it's like, well, shut up. i ordering for another one, and I got a new one here already. So I basically have a brand new set. So I'm just hoping that these shocks work out for me and I don't have to replace them. Check what just came in the mail. It is around 11 o'clock now. <laughs> it's a horse's head. Now, and a baby horse because you're a baby it's just arrived we got that ducati motorcycle oil real soon we're gonna see if this puppy even runs so let's research how much oil i need actually we got to replace the oil filter as well as the oil filter actually is a paper cartridge that's right down here so let's replace that there it is weird little thing hate seeing when he gets the mole grips out. It makes me want to cry. So you're down here, man. Clean all this stuff. I, I wonder if he ever gets rid of that bit. I'm going to wait to pour the oil in until I get those keys. So, we'll see you all Oh, the Ducati. Oh, it's Shell. Ugh. Tomorrow. 15W50. Wow. I'm going to wait. 
Probably it helps them stop them rattling. Just so pour the oil in <laughs> until I get those keys. Probably so is. We'll see y'all tomorrow. 15W15. Jesus Christ. Saying that, that's actually probably to do with the fact that it has a dry clutch. These have dry clutches. I'm sure they do. Do these have the dry clutches? I don't know if these have the dry clutches. No, it's... No, it's a wet clutch, isn't it, I think? To cut his eye, like Andy will know. And, and, Andy, Andy, you tell us. I want no one else to tell us but Andy. Quickly replaced this piece right here, which broke off during the collision. As well as a valve. This piece. Valve cover bolt that I stripped while putting in this bolt on the outside. How did you strip that? So he's had to take this entire thing off. He stripped that out, so he's had to take this entire thing off. Order a new one of these, which he's already ordered a new one of. Top Valve wrenches. cover bolt that I stripped while putting in this bolt on the outside. Tart wrenches. Ooh, that's a nice bend. Get your mole grips out, you bend that right back. Keyword. I would say it's more about the immobilizer and the coding for the key. Oh, it is go time. Let's run through this list, put some oil in the bike, and start it up. You got a coolant in it. That is a lovely funnel. If you want to buy me a Christmas present, get me one of them funnels. That's lovely. Specifically that one that Ginger has had. I've got 3.2 But no, that, that funnel's cool. liters of motorcycle oil in the engine. Now i got to install this ignition and then we'll fire it up. Bit hasty, but what? Oh. All right, moment of truth. My heart's kind of pounding here. Let's see if the bike primes, first of all. Ah, uh, yes. Obviously, this is the thing. If it doesn't start, it didn't need the dash because the dash isn't connected. So why you need that reprogramming, I don't know. Put the key in. She primes. Now i got to find the start button. <laughs> it might all go wrong, but I've got to dig around in this plastic bag to find the start button, which also means I've got to do that to find the kill switch. Right here. Yay! We think... I don't see why it's no way. The, 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 as far as the engine's concerned, it just lost its nose. Oops. Like, what I'm saying is, there doesn't seem to be any engine damage, apart from the head getting a bit of a nut. So, why would you not expect... Oh, maybe the wiring, yeah, maybe. That's the only reason why I think this wouldn't start, because maybe something's happened to the wiring. Ginger biscuit. No way. The bike starts now, so now let's add some coolant so we can run it for a little bit longer. Oh, was no coolant. Oh god. A bike, a bike of this kind of performance and this kind of power density, you shouldn't really run it without any coolant in it. Just generally speaking, but it means you can. The bike doesn't care. It will melt itself gladly. Just 
hanging here, Jesus Christ. That's probably shitty old fuel, is that? It's winter, which means it has summer fuel in it, probably. Well, actually, we don't know it crashed. It could have been crashed for two years ago, who knows? But chances are it's like the old. I don't even know really how to describe how loud this bike is. It literally rattles the whole house. Everyone in my family can hear it. My neighbors can hear it. Probably the squirrels and bunnies in the burrows can hear it. But this bike. The squirrels in the burrow. Bike is insanely loud. And that's factory exhaust. So this outdoes the 600. He said the word. Is insanely loud. And that's fact. That's what? Factory exhaust, so. It's factory exhaust. Hey, Del. This outdoes the 600 any day. There you have it. The bike starts. That's a. It is an engine that is literally twice the size. <laughs> It out just it, look at it. It's pretty much the same size package, and it literally has twice the CC, right? And it's like, oh, it outdoes that six hundred. It's like it is literally twice the size. Each one of these cylinders is four times the volume of one of those cylinders. It's like, oh, oh, okay, then that might make sense. Huge accomplishment for me. I had faith that the bike starts, but there's always that little bit in the back of my mind saying, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I got more work to do. But I can't believe it starts so. This is what your parents said. Maybe you won't turn out, Ginger. Who knows? So, oh, guys, I've got tons more packages over there. New parts coming in, and we're going to slap the whole front end together. But that's going to be in the next video. I'll catch you then. See ya. Front end together, but that's going to be in the next video. I'll catch you then. See ya. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. <laughs>